Hello, everyone. I'm Suchi. Welcome to my talk. And first, let me thank the organizers for um, making this seminar happen and also for inviting me to speak. Today, I will be talking about a probabilistic view of latent space graphs and phase transitions. This is based on a drawing work with my advisor, Miklas Strach. Let's start with some notations. A graph G is a tuple of a set of vertices from 1 to n and a set of edges between them. And we denote the event i is connected to j if and only if there is an edge. And we consider the following generative model for latent space graphs. To begin with, we first associate each vertex with a d-dimensional random vector xi. And then the probability of i is connected to j conditional on those latent positions is determined by a function which of the two vectors corresponding to those two endpoints. And we call the function kappa here the connection function. Then the distribution over graph is specified by this formula. And note that there are actually two levels of randomness in the model. The first one is the randomness in the vectors. The second one is this uh, Bernoulli coin flips uh, determined by the kappa. And note that the latent space graph defined by this conditional probability is actually broad, very broad, and includes a lot of models studied before. So when kappa is a constant p, this is a well-known originally graph GMP. And when kappa is a threshold function over the inner product of the vectors, this is referred to as the random dot product graph. In particular, when X is uniformly distributed on the D minus one sphere, this is called the spherical random geometric graph GMPD. We can also consider when XI is uniformly from the discrete cube, and this is the random intersection graph. And more generally, we can consider a non-decreasing function over the Euclidean distance. Then this is the soft random geometric graph, which has been studied intensively in physics and various communication. In the statistic community, people also consider kappa to be a co continuous positive definite kernel, and they call it latent position graph. And also, the model generalizes the stochastic block model and many variants. And all the models listed above, except for the original graph, depend on the lat latent positions in some way. And the first step to understand those models is the following question. For a given simple graph, how can we verify that it, it actually has a underlying latent space? And in practice, this corresponds to the question, for example, in social networks, does there exist a feature space such that people are connected through them? And we can understand also this question by formalizing it as the following hypothesis testing problem. For a given sample G, the null hypothesis is G is a sample from GMP. The alternative is G is a sample from GMPD. And this question has been particularly studied for GMPD in previous work. And in the seminal work of DeRoy et al. in 2011, they show the following theorem. When the dimension goes to infinity, GMPD becomes close to GMP in total variation distance sense. And later in 2016, Bubak, Ding, Eldon, and Drach proved the following phase transition phenomena for GMPD. And when the dimension is much higher than to the, to the three, the total variation distance converts to zero. And when the dimension is much lower than to three, the total variation distance goes to one. In other words, GMPD goes through a phase transition from having detectable geometry to losing geometry at dimension of order n to the three. Actually, this phenomenon enlightens something even deeper in random matrices. That is, a Weichar matrix transitions to a GOE when the degree of freedom is much higher than the cubic order of its size. Let's start with the matrix X, which is a n by D matrix with IID standard normal entries. Or more generally, it can be a log concave measure. And the wish matrix defined by XX transpose. A Gaussian orthogonal ensemble, or GOE, is a real symmetric matrix with the off diagonal entries IID following a normal distribution. And since we're talking about graphs with no self loops, we usually ignore the diagonal entries and the concept of off diagonals. And around 2015 and 16, there are several papers that um, prove the following theorem. When we scale the wish matrix by one over square root of d, then the total variation distance between 
the scale weight matrix and GOE goes to zero when dimension is much higher than n, n to the cube. And now let's get back to our latent space graphs. We're particularly interested in the question that how about those graphs with those general connection functions? Do the property of the general con connection function affect the dimension threshold for losing geometry? And can we break the into the cube which are to a transition barrier? So we try to answer this question using two different uh, models. And in a recent work, we consider this noisy high dimensional random geometric graph. The connection function is defined by a convex combination of a constant and the threshold function. And we have a property of Q, which controls the dependency over the underlying positions. Q here can also be viewed as the signal to noise ratio in the graph. And we denote the model by GMBDQ. We show that in certain parameter regimes, the total origin distance goes to zero, while in other regimes, the total origin distance goes to one. And note here, if we choose Q to be decaying at some order of N, then the dimension threshold for the phase transition is actually lower than into the cube. The, the theorem can be visualized by the following phase diagram in the space of D and Q. And in the red region where the total origin distance goes to zero, detection is impossible. While in the green region where the total origin distance goes to one, there is a computationally efficient statistic that can tell the difference. There is also a yellow region which is not covered by the theorem. And next we ask the question, how does this phenomena generalize to other connection functions, in particular smooth functions, which are very popular in practice? In this work, we consider the following connection function, which is a monotone increasing function over the inner product of directors. So the connection function can naturally be viewed as a cumulative density function, a distribution function of some independent neural variable Z. And we also want to interpolate between the evolutionary graph and the geometric graph. The natural parameter to choose is the variance parameter of this random variable. And some examples of sigma include the logistic and Gaussian density fun uh, distribution function, which are commonly used in practice. The square root D normalization here corresponds to the scaling for the Wisher matrix. And the broad family of the graph is denoted by GMPDR. Here we have a plot of the connection function with different variance parameters. We see that when R is small, the CDF is close to the threshold function, which corresponds to the GMPD. On the other hand, if R is large, the CDF is flat and is close to a constant, which corresponds to the electronic graph. Actually, there is an alternative noisy view of GMPDR. So in random geometric graph, the connection is determined by comparing the inner product with the fixed threshold. And in GMPDR, we introduce this random variable Z. And now the connection is determined by comparing the inner product with something wiggling around a constant. And further, if we move the randomness to the left, this actually becomes, we're doing an entry-wise perturbation or noise to the Wisher matrix in the random geometric graph. The takeaway here is softness in those geometric graphs is roughly noise. And here is our main result. So suppose P is between zero and one to be fixed, and that is where in the dense regime. And we also assume that sigma satisfies some mild smoothness conditions. Then if n to the cube over R to six times D goes to zero, then the total version distance goes to zero. On the other hand, if into the uh, cube over R to six times D goes to infinity, the total version distance goes to one. Similarly, we have the following phase diagram in the space of R and D. And unfortunately, there is still like a region which we don't know. For the rest of a couple minutes, I'll just give, um, go over the pr proofs briefly. So we start with the impossibility result. The first test, in the first step, we convert the total origin distance between the graph to the cryo divergence using a Pinsky inequality. And then by tensorizing the matrix, we actually can rewrite the KL divergence as the sum of a conditional KL of the rows by chain rule. And then with this inequality, we can then upper bound the KL divergence 
by a chi-square divergence. Later, using a second moment method and interchanging the expectations, we arrive at some moment generated function of a quantity. And finally, by a sub exponential tail of this quantity and a bound on the expectation, we obtain an upper bound on the total version distance. And next, we turn to the possibility result. So in a graph, the indicator of a triangle can be written as the product of the entries of the adjacent matrix. And we use the sun triangle statistic, statistic, which was proposed by Bubak et al. and used in later works uh, frequently. And the sun triangle statistic is nothing but a centered version of the tri triangle counts in the graph. The reason for this centering is to reduce the variance, which is crucial in the proof. In GMP, because of the independence of edges, the calculation for sun triangle statistics is very simple. Um, the expectation is zero and the variance is upper bounded by into the cube. And the major challenge in the work is to estimate a lower bound for the expected number of triangles in GMPDR, but with respect to the parameters. And this is kind of a quanti quantitative uh, correlation inequality for the edges. So proof follows the intuition that there are two distinct regimes. So when the dimension is large, uh, Following the Wisher to GOE transition, the edges are more independent. But when R is large, the collection function is kind of flat, which follows from a linear, a linear expansion or a tail extension would work. And by doing by implementing this using various techniques, including Stan's lemma, Gaussian hypercontractivity, and other techniques, we arrive at the following lemma. So the expected number of sun triangles in GMPDR is lower bounded by this quantity and the variance is upper bounded by this quantity. And then the proof can be concluded by applying a Chapchef's inequality. So I will conclude the talk with several open problems. Um, obviously the upper and lower bound doesn't match. So the first question is what is the exact dependency of the variance parameter? The second one is can we relax those um, smoothness conditions on the connection functions. And the third one is at a high level, how are those results connected to those uh, random matrix results? Is there a kind of deeper connection? For the first one, we have the following conjecture. The sun triangle statistic probably gives the, the exact bound. This is witnessed by like in various situations when the sun triangle statistic gives a sharp bound. And also we suspect there is a factor of R square lost when we apply the instance inequality. So I'll stop here. Thank you for your attention. I'll, I'm happy to take any question.